I'm thankful the Bible is not a science book. Hey everybody, good morning. My name is Richard and welcome to Contra Thoughts. We're going to be talking about Neil deGrasse Tyson, why he does not believe in sunrises or sunsets. Pretty astounding. Coming up next. All right, so, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this. Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's a astrophysicist, talks kind of weird, but he talks about Bible, and this is where we're talking about today, because we could talk all day about science, but, you know, I'm not a scientist, but he's not a theologian. So we can cross paths here, because these things matter, and I want to show how wrong he is in almost all of just this little snippet of, you know, he's on a talk show or something like that. But it's the standard narrative that he even believes in wrong eschatology, which we'll look at and how that really affects him and also affects us today. Nothing about science. And you read, say, the Bible, the Old Testament, which in Genesis is an account of nature. That's, that's what that is. And I said to you, give me your description of the natural world based only on this you would say the world was created in six days <laughs> uh not according to some people some christians quote unquote yeah the world is created in six days uh because god's powerful he's mighty it said so multiple times uh there's a sun moon and stars there's the day and the night there's the cycles there's all these things it's funny that you have atheists or or liberal christians so-called that believe the bible or at least they know what it says they say, yeah, that's it. And then I don't believe that. This is where we get a far better understanding of um, from liberals a lot of times. I forget who it is who says that. But anyway, it's almost better to read liberals and non-believing so-called Christians, progressive Christians, whatever, because they read the text without all their kind of big Eva, mushy middle bias and say, yeah, I don't believe that. But that's what the text is saying. <laughs> now, as faithful followers of Christ, we should see that and say, yeah, I want to believe that because that's what God's word says. So a little some, some more <clears throat> and that stars are just little points of light much less so the bible does not say stars are little points of light that is just abjectly wrong that's it doesn't say that anywhere um it says you know there's other language within it god's above the stars this and this and this but we'll look at a bunch of bible in a moment sir than the sun in fact they can fall out of the sky if you're one of the signs that yeah. the second coming is that the stars will fall out of the sky and land on earth so it's even right that me. Okay, so see, also that, uh, we'll look at these multiple places, but like a third of the stars fall from heaven, it's in Revelation, it's in Matthew, it's in Mark, it's in a bunch of places, Luke. But this is where you have a wrong view of eschatology, you're going to then have a wrong view of the Bible, and therefore you're going to not believe the Bible. Now, I don't know how much Neil deGrasse Tyson actually has read the scripture or studied it at all. Probably not very much. That's my guess. You know, most people will just kind of look at it and brush it off. Oh, I don't need it. I'm a man of science, right? Remember, science means knowledge. That's what the word means. And scientists, three, 400 years ago, 500 years ago, all these guys were uh, Christians in one regard or another. They believed in a creator. They believed in a consistent world. This is the only way you can really do science is that you believe in a consistency. Gravity does what it does. You do this, you pour vinegar on baking soda, that does what it does. Observable science is what we get, how we get computers and cameras and cars and medicine and building roads and dams and things like that. That's a observa observational science. Historical science is what he's talking about. This is where you get all the speculative stuff. Well, there's two different things. And Bill Nye uh, did a debate with Ken Ham a number of years ago. And Bill Nye didn't, it's kind of like this like shell game where they spin it around and there's nothing actually under each of the shells. You know, they kind of pass the buck onto somebody else if you press them too hard because they don't actually have any fill, uh, fulfilled answers. It's just kind of like, well, uh, geologic column. Well, you know, starlight. Well, dinosaurs. It's like that doesn't really answer the question. You weren't there. You weren't there in the past. OK, you dig up fossils. You did. You see starlight. All that is present. It's all right now. You don't know when they lived, where they lived, how far the starlight is or how fast it truly is uh, uh, traveling kind of a big deal right so he's got a wrong view of science even which is sad because you know he's a scientist but what are you what are you gonna do when you're an unbeliever you suppress the truth and unrighteousness and you're going to find excuses this is what atheists do you find excuses to not believe the bible people do it all the time 
things. You don't know what those things are. You have no concept of what the actual universe is. So everybody who tried to make proclamations about so, but he does. The authors of scripture do, and there's, there's uh, I'll put a link in the description. Um, I'm gonna just search stars, and it's there's a couple different websites that you can kind of it coalesces the um, verses, and you know we see. Orion and Pleiades, we see God creating this, we see the works of his fingers and so many other places that, no, we do know what this is. They're not idiots, but uh, Tyson here, or DeGrasse Tyson, I don't know, whatever how you say his name, he has this geological, geological, chronological snobbery that I'm re- living right now. It's the best time right now because I'm obviously me. It's incredibly arrogant, but we all do it. Uh, some more than others, even Christians and faithful followers of Christ, we, we do that. Because we think, well, this is the rapture. This is this. This is the end times. And it's like, it's been almost 2,000 years since Jesus left. Do you think it's going to happen? Why? Because of wars and rumors of wars? More on that later. Physical universe. Based on Bible passages. Based. So what happened was, when science discovers things, and you want to stay religious, or you want to continue to believe that the Bible is on airing, what you would do... I want to stay religious. See, he's religious too, because he's believing something about the past. He wasn't there. He has no idea. He has a guess, he has a belief, but he has no idea. Well, maybe some idea. Things like, oh, they didn't really mean that literally, they meant that figurative. So this whole sort of reinterpretation of how figurative the poetic passages of the Bible are came after science showed that this is not how things unfolded. Okay, so science shows. No, people do science. Science is just observability and repeatability. That's what real science is. You see something, you repeat it. You can't show something. Oh, the earth is 13.6 billion years old or whatever it is. And the whole universe is, you know, 18 billion. You weren't there. You have no idea. You have no idea. It's a guess. In Darwin's time, the earth used to be thought to be, it was, you know, a few million. Then it was a hundred million. Then it was 500 million. Then it was a billion. Now it's 4.6 billion. And it's like, well, which is it? Science changes all the time. I'm thankful the Bible is not a science book. And you should be too. Because the Bible doesn't change. God's word doesn't change because God is transcendent. He is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the A to the Z. So trust him if you don't know him. Because what Tyson here is saying, it's it's like cotton candy. You might be like, oh, this looks so good. You know, and you have a little thing and, you know, you bite into it and there's nothing there. And you're like, well, let me eat some more cotton candy. And then you eat some more. doesn't do anything. Then you eat some more. And eventually you're like, oh. And your stomach has a pit in it because you've eaten, you know, three cotton candies thinking they would satisfy you. This worldview is cotton candy at best. The secular, godless worldview. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Some scripture passages that we'll look at because, you know, we have to. Psalm 8, 3 and 4. When I look at your heavens, the works of your fingers, the sun, the moon, the moon. And the stars which you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him or you care for him? Son of man, you care for him. So, son of man, right there, you care for him. God made these things. It, 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 there's no room for evolution in the scripture because that's not what happened. Now, this is a very new concept. Speaking of new ideas, this is a new concept within the last 200 years. Okay. It didn't start with Darwin, it's been happening for about 50 to 100 years before that, at least getting traction in Western Europe, England, places like that. Uh, Rasmus Darwin was his grandfather, Charles Darwin's grandfather, and he believed some stuff. And, you know, there's there's things in the past with Egypt and other things that had some sort of kind of materialism and goo and slime and evolving and stuff. But overwhelmingly, there are gods or God in the past, in all religions, the standard that there is a creator. You look at a house, there's obviously a builder. You look at the shirt, there's obviously somebody who designed this. You look at my computer, my camera, your car, maybe your driving in. Nobody looks at a foundation is like, well, look at that. It just happened by chance. Nobody, absolutely no one. Nobody looks at a plate of food. Nobody looks at the most basic thing and says, yeah, except for somehow for us, we came together by chance randomly over millions and billions of years. Give me a freaking break. Who's religious? Who believes in fairy tales? You do. Tyson, Joe Rogan, Bill Nye, Bill Maher, Richard Dawkins, all these guys, they're sad cotton candy purveyors that have a worldview that is empty. It literally dissolves in your mouth and leaves you wanting more. It's sad. I feel sorry for these guys. I really do. Because they 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 pretend to be all fancy and nice. And, you know, they're on the talk shows. I'm not, right? 
other people aren't. They're smarter than me, other Christians most of the time. And therefore, you know, we're looked at as the buffoons. Oh, we believe in, you know, a guy rising from the dead. Yeah, we do. Because people don't normally rise from the dead. That's what makes Jesus so amazing. Revelation, here's some of this, 613. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth as a fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. Now, Mark 13, 25, Matthew 24, say the same thing. Luke 21, I believe it is as well. The fourth angel blew his trumpet. Third of the sun was struck. A third of the moon was struck. A third of the stars. And this is where when you have a bad view of eschatology, which a lot of Christians do, a lot do. And it's okay, but be open to this. You might be thinking, where are you going with this? What, what do you believe again? Well, the stars aren't obviously stars. Obviously. Now, he thinks because he's living now, he's smarter now, and these people were idiots, and they think, oh, they're just little stars. There's still tens of thousands of stars. If those came to Earth, that would still cause a massive problem, even if they were tiny little bits of light that were, you know, around the sun or however you were, and not, you know, light years away. Okay? Uh, but how does that actually work? And that's actually not what he's saying at all, because stars, well, a third of them come and fall and the sun. How can you have a third of the sun struck and a third of the moon struck? I mean, these things obviously in Revelation are figurative. It was apocalyptic from the get-go, dude. We're not going back and being like, well, I want to believe the Bible still. So there's plenty of people that don't want to believe the Bible still. They grew up in church and no longer do that. There's no one that I know of, and obviously I'm just me, that says, oh, shoot, I believed this hundreds of years ago because I wasn't living hundreds of years ago. And yet now I'm going to go back and reinterpret it as figurative. No, we interpret it according to the literature, as I've said before, and using from other people. Literature, literal, those words sound similar? They are because they're root words, right? One is root from the other. We, the literalness comes from the literature. You read something from building a bookshelf, right? Or Lego instructions or an email from your boss or a note from your wife. Or a thing, you know, a book, a novel, a biography. You read these things differently according to the literature, right? You don't read Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings or something like that as literal. Well, you do in the sense that this is the universe it is. Or Star Wars, a bunch of Star Wars books. Of course, they're known for their movies and TV shows. But anyway, you read it according to what it is. So Revelation in particular, Daniel and other places, are apocalyptic. You don't read them, quote unquote, literally. This is where people get hung up in a dispensational way. They're like, well, it's a thousand year reign of Christ. So I believe in that literally. Well, you believe in a woman's going to sit on the moon or be clothed with the sun or that actually stars are going to fall from heaven? A third of them? Because that's a lot of stars. That's going to eviscerate. I mean, if the moon got any closer, we would be drowned, let alone the sun. And the sun's a small star compared to the plenary amount of stars. Even if the stars were little tiny points of light, which the Bible doesn't say they are. Uh, but Tyson's not going to be challenged by the guest or the host rather, because he's the guest and, you know, he just gets to spout whatever, just like I get to spout whatever, but go check what I'm saying. I'm going to put again, this link in the description uh, for these here, because, uh, you know, don't just take my word for it. Psalm 8, 3, verse, verse 3. Yeah. When I look at the heavens, you work your fingers. I already read that. Job 9, 9, who made the bear Orion Pleiades in the chambers of the South? Okay, so this is Job, the oldest book in the scripture, the oldest book in the Bible. And he's talking about the constellations we still have today. They didn't go back and reinterpret it. Now, he wants to believe that, Tyson does, because, well, you know, that fits his worldview. Well, it's nonsense. Total nonsense. Okay, now we have some figurative. There's so many. I'm Again, I'm put in, you can search it if you want to do sun, moon, stars, or stars, or whatever. But I'll put a link in the description for the website that I cited. Here's some figurative. Job 30. Eight, seven. When the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. Remember, the morning stars are angels. Now, do stars sing? There's a whole other theory about that pre flood and the stars and other things we're not going to talk about. But do they sing? Because, of course, Job was written after the flood anyway. <clears throat> no, they're just balls of light, balls of fire. Obviously, it's figurative. Obviously. Doesn't mean it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean something. Like if I show you a picture, I don't know how many pictures we make. If I show you a picture of my wife, you're not gonna be like, that's not your wife. Or here's my wife, right? 
Here's my children. No, it's not. That's a piece of paper. That's that's a digital thing. You know, I show you my phone. Here's my wife. Here's my kids. No, that's my phone. Now, we all know what that means. When we say a sunrise, I guarantee you Neil deGrasse Tyson has watched sunrise and said, hey, you want to go watch the sunrise? You want to go, hey, let's go hang out in the sunset, especially when he was younger, right? In his, you know, college days or whatever. Go hang out with a girl. Hey. Maybe he's gay. I don't even know. I think he's gay. It doesn't matter. Um, a guy. It doesn't matter. He's going to go see a sunrise, a sunset. We all talk like that because we're geocentric. Okay. And remember, it was guys like Galileo who said, actually, I think the sun is uh, uh, here. And he's the one who actually believed the Bible. It was the Roman Catholic Church who wasn't believing the Bible. Don't conflate things. And got mad at him, called him a heretic, things like, like this to be like, well, the earth isn't center. No, the earth isn't the center. But Galileo hundreds of years ago found that out based on observational science based on God's word and his world, okay? God's consistent. He doesn't change. He's not erring. We can trust him. You should trust him. It's far better than a cotton candy worldview. Revelation, here we go. His right hand held seven stars and from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. His face was, face was shining like the sun in full strength. Uh, oh, wait, what? He had seven stars on his head? Uh huh. Great sign appeared in heaven a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet. In her head was a crown of 12 stars. Revelation 12. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify about these things for the churches, the root, the descendant of David, the bright morning star. Isaiah 14 12. For you are fallen from heaven, O star, son of the dawn. How you are cut down to the ground, you lay the nation's ways. These things matter, don't they? Obviously, they're figurative. Obviously. And it's not being reinterpreted later because, oh, these are all far away stars. Oh, we I still want to be religious. Well, you know what we should do? We should just reinterpret it. No. Prove it. Show me where they said that. Show me. Actual faithful Christians doing that. Prove it. Don't just spout nonsense. Back up your claims. Go to the Bible like I just did. Read it in its context. Right? Did God have a mighty hand and outstretched arm, right? Did a giant arm come down for, for Egypt and to deliver them from Egypt and, you know, spread? No, but that's one of the most recounted stories in the Bible, the deliverance and the exodus from Egypt. Pardon the Red Sea. Did that happen? Yes, that happened. Do I believe that happened? Yes, just like you would believe it didn't happen. Well, it doesn't normally happen. So what? You believe that it didn't happen. I believe that it did happen because God is faithful. God is trustworthy. His word is true. You can believe that it doesn't happen. That's fine. And you'll answer for that when you're dead. It's up to you, right? But you have to bow the knee to Christ now. He wants faithful followers now. Nobody believed that in Christ's time. Nobody believed it 3,500 years ago. There's a giant arm that came down now. But again, when you have a materialistic worldview, you believe that you're the best, that this is the best time now living and everything else, then you're going to be arrogant. And that's what he is. He thinks these things because he's arrogant. Okay. Isaiah 13. We talk about, we see Joseph. Um, remember, he has the dream. Now, this is in a dream. It doesn't always say this in a dream. But when the context, remember, we have to have the context is what determines what it means. Right? You can't just say something green or gay or gray or whatever, right? That's fresh. That's this. That's What does that mean? That's cool. I mean, there's all sorts of terms just in English. And we have in the Greek and the Hebrew exponentially more, especially in the Greek. There's all sorts of different words that mean different things. And we have these are translations, right? The KJV translates to end of the world. It says in Matthew 24. Well, that's the end of the age. It's a different word than cosmos. But people take that and run with it in the wrong way. Isaiah 13. It says, judgment on Babylon, the sound of the tumult is in the mountains, the great multitude, son of the up, sound of the uproar of the kingdoms and nations are gathering together. So the context is what? Nations. The Lord is host of, is mustering a host for battle. Wail for the day of the Lord is near. Destruction for the Almighty will come. Therefore, all hands will be feeble. Every heart will melt. Melt? What? That doesn't happen. That's not literal. Of course, 
Their hearts aren't going to physically melt like wax. They're going to be terrified as if their hearts are melting. Where is, what's the center of your being? Your heart. I mean, like, again, people, stop being a fool and read the scripture in its context. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel and wrath and fierce anger to make the land a desolation, destroy its sinners. Remember, what is this? Judgment of Babylon. The sun, their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be dark at its rising and the moon will not shed its light. I will punish the world for its evil, the wicked for their iniquity. I will put an end to the pomp and the arrogant. Lay low the pompous pride of the ruthless. Like I said, Joseph, he has the dream. The stars, his brothers are bowing down. There's the wheat. These things are figurative. Now, there are certain times that it says sun, moon, and stars that are obviously don't worship the host of heaven, right? Don't worship the sun, moon, and stars. There's many, many places that talk about this. So it's referencing sun, moon, and stars, Matthew 24 in particular. That's the one of the biggest places. Well, that didn't happen, right? That didn't happen either at destruction of temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD or AD 70, or... It's not going to happen because you can't, because Jesus was wrong. Therefore, if Jesus is wrong, I don't have to believe him. I don't have to submit to him. And yada, 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 right? This is what they do all the time. This is something from American Vision, Gary DeMars. Uh, he's the president there. And there was a debate <clears throat> between Hitchens and Doug Wilson, Christopher Hitchens and Doug Wilson. When Jesus says in Matthew 24, the sun, the moon, the sun is going to go out and the stars are fall from heaven. He is quoting Isaiah 13 and Isaiah 34. There is a decreation language throughout the Old Testament. Every time it occurs in the Old Testament, it always refers to a military destruction of a nation or a city state. Always. Used always twice. So you think he's pretty confident? Probably. In Isaiah 13, the oracle against the king of Babylon, and you have the same decreation language Jesus says in Matthew 24. Not one stone is going to be left upon another. I won't go, go to it for time. Look at Matthew 24. Read it in the context of Jesus is looking at the temple with his, with his disciples. They're like, man, look at this temple. This is so great. And Jesus is like, yeah, you see that temple? It's going to be destroyed. It's going down along with everything else. Not one stone will be left upon another. When did that happen? AD 70. That's the same language that is the second coming that so many uh, dispensationalists will believe. And this guy believes. And this atheist guy who's here, Morg, I think it is, some atheist guy here. He's the one who's citing these things. This guy, sadly, I mean, I feel sorry for him because he was taught lies. You know, trying to uphold God's word. I get it. And if you're a dispensationalist, I'd say, consider the other side, or at least have you read other options? Have you read it, read it in the actual context, in the literal interpretation? And not some book or some favorite pastor, but read it with the sites of Jerusalem. What if Revelation which I think it was, was written in 64, 65, 66 AD and not 90. That's before the destruction of Jerusalem. That means all these things are actually already in our past, not in our future. I mean, he says soon take place. This is going to happen soon. This generation, this will not see the sign until all these, on and on and on. You can't have almost 2000 years of this and it'd be soon. What does that mean? Especially when he says something like this generation. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. I really do. Um, the link in the description will be there with the uh, Bible verses, the more passages that you can check out with the sun, moon, and stars and all that. But see, we have to read it under in its context, right? The literature, literal, that's where we get the word from. Read it in its context, okay? Until next time, be against the world for the world.